Get outside when everyone. Let me remove my face shield, my face mask. Forgive me not to remove my cap. I am just hiding something inside it. So uh, we're going to make a video lecture. And this all started with a simple conversation with Mom Aga. That is why I asked the support of Mom Aga to be my production manager here. Thank you very much, Mom Aga. All credits to you. Okay, so as I have said, Eris started with a simple conversation. She actually sent a photo of the improvised equal arm balance of Lian. I was amazed by this improvised balance because if you are going to look at the materials, it may, it may not uh, seem to uh, have no uh, sense for you because it is hard. And then disposable caps. But actually, it can be your equal arm balance. And the next question that I asked to Mom Agat was, what standard balance have you used for this? And then she told me, I won pa. So, I'm just wondering how Leon would use this if there will be no equal arm balance. That's why I told her, just borrow balances in the science laboratory at school. And then she said, I may borrow some balances, but how could we use it? So she proposed to demonstrate the use of the balances. That's why I asked her assistance to make this video lecture possible. So, and I also want to take the opportunity to have a brief lecture about your lesson two, and that is observation. If you still remember on the lecture, the observation must be factual. It should be based on the things that is perceived by your senses. The sense of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching are the things that you will use in observing. Meaning to say, all that are per perceived by your senses, those are observations. And we have two types of observation. The quantitative observation and the qualitative observation. And the activity that you maybe have already performed it, about the time or the 10 peso coin, I think that is 1 peso or 10 peso coin that you use. I think 1 peso coin. It's about qualitative observation. You are going to describe the characteristics of a 1 peso coin from your memory. The first thing, you're going to glance on it, and then you're going to draw it, and then you keep it, and then you're going to draw the 1 peso coin from your memory. Okay? Alright. So all the things that you describe on your drawing are the qualitative observation. Maybe you may not ask this, but are you aware that there are many crimes that have been solved because of being a keen observer of the person who witnessed the crime? Because some investigators may ask, what is the height of the of the criminal, what is the body built, what is the color of the shirt, and then if you are a keen observer and you know how to describe qualitatively the objects are, then you may help solve some crimes. Okay? Alright. So we will not uh, go farther of the qualitative. Once you describe the color, the appearance, the body build, the height, these are qualitative observation. Okay. And this is another form of observation, the quantitative, wherein you are going to measure. That's why on the activity inserted there, the scale, the measurement about metric system. Because in measuring, for you to have 
an accurate measurement, you are required to use metric system of measurement. Because there was an agreement there long time ago, if, I, if my memory serves me right, 1978 that all countries agreed to use metric system of measurement. Okay, why not English system of measurement? Can you give me example of the English system of measurement? Okay, the cup, what else? Inch, and sometimes we use our body part in measuring, like the dangkal, what else? Foot, dipa, okay, in which that is subjective. Because my dipa would not be as long as your dipa. Do you agree? Okay, how about you, Lian? How about you... Ano pa nga ang mga pangalan ninyo? How about you, Jana? Okay. So, do you think my dipa is as long as your dipa? Of course, you will not agree with that. That's why we discourage the use of body parts in measuring. And even the cup. Is your cup is as big as our cup? Like this one? Ganito ba kalaki ang cup nyo? O baka naman ang cup nyo kasi laki ng tabo? Ah? O, may cup talaga na maliit. O di kaya, may cup na mataba. Oh, actually, this is mad. No? Alright, so iba-iba ang ginagamit natin. That's why, when you are going to use the, put one cup of water on the beaker. Okay, so you will come up with different amount because you use different size of measuring device. That's why we have standard and we are going to use this standard uh, instruments and the standard unit of measurement, with, which is metric. And that is, you can find it in your module. Okay, so let us proceed with the quantitative observation. If you are going to observe some measurement using length, okay, like for example, in your activity, I ask you to measure the length of the paper, right? Okay. In measuring the paper of the of, in measuring the the paper, which one you are going to use? The ruler or this? Do you know what is this? Meter stick. Okay. So, this two can be used to measure the length of an object or the distance of an object. Okay. So, in your module, I ask you to measure the length of the paper. Okay. In using the ruler, you may observe that there are two Scales there. Get your ruler and then look at the scales. You can see there, there is the unit. The unit here, okay, there, on zero, starting point, you can see there is CM. What do you think is CM stands for? Okay, Mom Agat said centimeter. Okay, Mom Agat is maybe you are not aware that Mom Agat is standing by me here because she is my production manager. Okay, another here is can you see it? Can you see it? I N. What do you think the I N stands for? An inch. And if you still remember, the inch is an English system of measurement and the CM is the metric. So, which one you are going to use? The centimeter. Okay? Alright. So, I ask you to measure the length and the width of the paper for you to compute the perimeter. 
What is the formula for the perimeter? You can have it in your module. 2L plus 2W. The L stands for the length. Why 2? Because we have two sides of the length here. Okay. Why 2W? The width. Because we have another. For you to measure the perimeter of the area. Okay? Alright. So you can measure the perimeter of this feet. And then, if you are going to measure the width, the distance, and the height of the table, you may use the meter speed. Okay. And now, if you are going to measure the volume of this table, of course, you will not be using the ruler, that the meter speed. Okay. So, measure the length to width. And the height of this table. So you have the three dimensions. The length, the width, and the height. And we are going to multiply these three dimensions. That is your volume. Okay? Okay? You get it? Alright. So, now, that is the volume of the solid. What about the volume of the liquid? Okay. So you will use glass panel. If you are going to pour liquid in the graduated sea. Okay. And then, how are you going to read it? You are not going to fold it up. Just put it in a flat surface. And then, you are going to kneel in order to have an eye level. So, you are going to... You make sure that your eye is level on the graduated cylinder that you are going to take the reading. So in this case, your volume of the liquid is 21. Okay? And if you are going to observe the shape of the water, it is slightly curved. Why do you think it is slightly curved? Because of the attraction of the molecules of that liquid, specifically of water, and the molecule of this glass. So since that, it is attraction between the glass molecule and the water molecule, we will call it as adhesion. Okay? Adhesion. The attraction between the two unlike molecules. Okay, but also there is also an attraction between the water molecules, especially if you are going to observe the drop of water in the, here, in the table. Okay. Can you see? The drop of drops of water here. Okay. So if you are going to observe closely, you may observe a dome-like shape of the water. And that demonstrates the attraction between the molecules of water. And that is what we call cohesion. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so much for that. Let's move to that. Measurement of mass. Okay, now we will measure the mass of an object. Let's try to use this improvised balance made by Leanne. Okay, let us try to weigh this banana. Okay, have a guess. How many grams do you think this banana is? Okay, let's first try 100 grams. Uh oh, the banana is much heavier. Let's change the 100 grams into 200 grams. Okay, what do you think? Are the two cups balanced? 
Are the two cups balanced? Oh, Ma'am Agat said, almost. Because there are no ones here. The balance that is ones here is not available. So let's find out if the balance, the improvised balance, have an accurate measurement. Let us try to use the balances here. These are standardized. We have the double beam balance and we have the triple beam balance. I chose to use the triple beam balance. Okay, let us put the object, the banana there. We weigh 200 on the balance made by Lian. So let's try 200. Oh, not yet balanced. So let's move the ones here. Okay. So, the weighing scale marked here, zero, it means that the banana weighs 207 grams. Well, not bad with this improvised because for those who use the improvised, you may say that your improvised balance can also be a reliable weighing scale. So, seven, I think seven grams is already negligible. So, this banana is 207 grams, okay? So, if you take it, just check the 200 grams, how many calories do you get from this banana, okay? So, try more objects to be measured so that your skills in measuring will be improved, okay? So, the last one is the thermometer, okay? I have two thermometer here, the clinical thermometer and the laboratory thermometer. What is the difference between the two? The clinical is limited only for, I think, 50 degrees Celsius because this is intended to measure the body temperature. And I guess you know already the body temperature, the normal body temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, and we are going to look at this laboratory thermometer. It is measured until 100. In fact, I have one thermometer there until 200 degree Celsius because the chemical yeah. reaction may record more than 100 degree Celsius. But anyway, we will just measure tap water, hot water, so this may be enough. Okay. So before you use the thermometer, you have to calibrate it. How are you going to calibrate it? Because maybe you touch the end of this, and this is very sensitive in temperature. And this may record your body temperature if you hold the end of this. So you need to calibrate it by dipping in cold water. Observe what happened. The red mark, it moves down. Okay, so make sure that the end will not touch at the bottom of the glass. Just submerge it on the cold water. Okay? And then, careful not to hold the end of this. So, if you are going to ask to measure the tap water. Okay. Tap water. Mm -hmm. So, this is the tap water, right? Okay, wait for a few minutes. And then, put it in the tap water. Okay, so you will not put the thermometer up and then take the reading because you may not get the accurate reading because when you put it up, it will submerge to the air temperature. So it may record the temperature of the air. So while it is submerged to the top water, that is the time that you will get the reading. Ma'am Agat, will you please get a reading? 
Let me hear your voice. You are recorded. 28. 28. Okay. Let me see. 28. Okay, Ma'am Agat. Got the temperature correctly. Read the temperature correctly. That is 28. The temperature of the tap water. What about the... What is in your module? The hot water, I think. Okay. So let's measure the hot water. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Agat. Let's put the hot water on the beaker. Anyway, the beaker is not breakable by the temperature. Okay, Ma'am Agat, ready? Get the reading. Just wait until the red mark stops at certain points. What's the reading? Still going up? Yes. Still going up? 68. Or it stopped at? 68. 68. Let me see. If Mom Agat got the right reading? 68. Okay, Mom Agat. You did it correctly. So the temperature for the hot water is 68. And that ends the demonstration of the activity for the lesson 2. And I want you to meet the people behind this video lecture. So first again, let me introduce to you, Ma'am Aga, the brain of this activity. Thank you, Mama Agat. So the credit is yours. We have the technical support here. Michael. Michael. De Santos. Michael De Los Santos. Thank you, Michael, our cameraman. And our production technician, the lightman, mm -hmm. the cameraman, and the editor, J.R. Lagasca. Okay, thank you, JR. So, those are the people behind this. And I'm just hoping that this is not the last video that we are going to do in order for you, for us to help you do the activities and enhance your skills in, in science processes. Okay, see you next time. God bless.